right? Wrong time of day. Anyway. Uh, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to convince people that I'm the real Superman. Um, I'll be very brief. I just want to share something that uh, happened to me today. But I want to share some, some other things too. Uh, you know, God speaks to us every day. And sometimes... It's very easy for us to to know when when he's talking to us instead of trying to figure it out. And I think the reason why I'm able to discern now a little easier when he is speaking to me right away is because I've been spending a lot of time in his word lately. Um, I've never read the Bible from beginning to end. I read some books, the whole book, others, a few chapters, others, a few verses, but I have never read the whole Bible from beginning to end. So a few weeks ago, I decided that I was going to change that. And I started reading from the Gospels, uh, and I've read two so far from beginning to end. I've been reading two chapters every, every night before I go to bed, uh, before I, I say my prayers, before going to sleep. And, you know, today I had a situation that someone invited me to do something. It wasn't anything bad. But when I agreed to this invitation, I immediately f felt in my heart the Lord saying, no, you can't go. And I recognized it right away. But I was struggling to tell this person no, I'm actually not going to accept your invitation. Something happened that we got to talk a little more, and I say, I really can't do this because if I do, I'll be failing someone else, and I don't want to do that. But I was very surprised how the moment I agreed to this invitation, the Lord put it in my heart. can't do that. It felt my heart really heavy. And the moment I told this person, I'm sorry, but I can't accept your invitation, that heaviness went away. Uh, so I was reading just now from the Gospel according to John, chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So I love it when the Lord talks to us, yes, and we, we're able to hear that. Because I was actually talking to this person before, and, and I was sharing some things with this person, and I said, you know... All these things that I write, that I share in church, sometimes as an opening or sometimes as a message, uh, as a sermon, I just sit and listen to what God has been trying to tell me, and little by little, I start putting all these pieces together. And, and for me, not having all this biblical knowledge of knowing the Bible, not memorizing it, but knowing it from beginning to end, it's really hard to sometimes put a message together. It takes me several days. But it's good because I spent all this time with the Lord as I'm preparing, which it's making me grow spiritually. <coughs> so I guess it's a win-win. Yes. <coughs> uh, so that's what I wanted to share. And I want to finish by reading Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So the more we listen to him, the more we'll know we're going in the right direction. Amen. Amen. So Amen. that's my little. <laughs> Suzanne asked for prayer for her. 
She has an ear infection. Mm -hmm. She says it's very severe and she's been in a lot of pain to the point of crying. So we can lift her up for healing. Mm -hmm. um, any other prayer requests or testimonies you would like to share? Yes, James?
eight quart drink working on a big cylinder and I had a rosebud out trying to get a piston unstuck off of it. Rosebud's a big end that you put on a 70 oxygen torch to heat up big pieces of metal and get them to come loose. Um, two of the guys were working on one with wrench and the other one had the, had the uh, heat going. And the third guy came by and was cleaning off some of the parts using brake cleaner. Uh, brake cleaner is extremely flammable and why he was within range of that rosebud, I still don't understand right now. He was within six feet of where this rosebud was being used and the fumes went over. I crept over to where the rosebud, the flame was going and there was a fireball. There was a fireball. All three of them <coughs> did not get seriously hurt. Uh, all three of them lost all the hair on their arms and their skin turned uh, red. No lung burns, no face burns, no eye situations. If they would have breathed in that brake clean and that ignited, it would have burned their lungs inside right now. Uh, I, th I thank God, you know, that David got and everybody would have been all like, wow, nobody got hurt. And just a few minutes ago, sensing it would be gone, the Lord reminded me of that was the vicinity, either this morning or yesterday morning, I can't remember exactly when, I was praying as I was taking out uh, sheets for the work schedules and stuff for the pump shop and stuff. And I was praying in tongues as I was walking right by that area, either this morning at 6.30 or yesterday morning at 6.30, I can't remember the exact day, but there was something laid there and I didn't understand it till just now that he said, you put a safety net on that area because it's just coming. Lord. So I just praise the Lord that these guys didn't get hurt and or killed. Yeah, and I, amen. So mm -hmm. I just thank the Lord for that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being here in your presence today. We thank you, Father, because you always guide us down the path that you have laid out for us. In my moments, we to walk away from that path, Lord, but we know that with your spirit, we're going to know when we have to go back to it. The moment that you will give us the moment to put us back in the right path. We thank you, Father, for keeping us safe, for guarding us all the time, for worthy, so that we can fulfill the purpose that you have for us on this earth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all the promises that you have made for us, declaring our healing right now.
Yeah. 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 Y
Let the dead man say I am born again. Let the river flow. Let the
there's a cry stirs my heart If you can cry It's a desperate friend It's a cry The Moses prayed We're here today Here I come Show us your glory Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Jesus. That word became flesh. Thank you, Lord, that it lives inside of each one of us, Lord. We bless your name tonight, Lord. We celebrate you, Lord, your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your gift of salvation and eternal life and life more abundantly here and now. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, worship team. Abbreviated, but <laughs> hallelujah, not in spirit. Praise God. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. All this uh, we've been talking about, <clears throat> the, uh, the word of God, we just confessed it singing about it, praise the Lord, let the weak say I'm strong, all that is is just simply the same thing we do every service, and that's just saying that we're agreeing with what God says, we are weak, but in Him, 
We are strong. Praise the Lord. So I want to talk to you about that tonight. Praise the Lord. About understanding uh, really the power of God and uh, how, how this weakness is made strong. How strength comes from weakness. Praise the Lord. And uh, there may be many ways, but this is the way that the Lord has uh, spoken to me over the years about how we uh, appropriate, if you will, the power of God or the strength of God. It's by agreeing with God, by believing what his word says and then speaking that out in faith. Amen. Uh, the devil can't tell the difference between your voice and God's voice as long as you're speaking the word. Amen. He's just as afraid of that word if it's coming out of my mouth as he is if it was Jesus himself. Praise the Lord. If I'm speaking it in faith, if I'm in agreement with it, amen, it will bring to pass whatever God sent it to do. Amen. It's like the rain that comes down out of heaven, the snow that falls. Amen. And that word that comes down will produce whatever God sent it to produce as long as we send it back to him. Amen. As long as we speak it back. Praise God. So let's begin with uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Hebrews 11.3. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. This will be tomorrow is supposed to be a beautiful day, 60 degrees. Well, I'll be praying for Tim because the wind's supposed to be 100 miles an hour or something. So, so the, I know what is, you know, driving that those tractor trailers like a, having a sail out there, you know, and the wind's whipping around. So our... Uh, son who uh, drives for uh, Old Dominion. He got blown off the road here. Remember here a week, uh, about a month or so back when we had that real bad uh, wind and uh, they had tornadoes and stuff going on about the same time. He got blown clear off the road. Fortunately, he wasn't hurt, but he had just dropped off the last and, you know, trailer's empty. So it's just, you know, I mean, it, it, it'll just blow in. Praise the Lord. Thank God for 60 degrees, but tone that wind down a little bit. It's great. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let me read it one more time. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. That's us simply exercising faith in what God has said. Now, you can you could talk about this with an unbeliever, They'll argue everything from, you know, we're descended from apes to, you know, Darwin's theory all the way through every kind of uh, mishmash of theology and uh, science and, and so forth. But the truth is, we understand how this was all done. It was done by the word of God, and we believe that. We understand it by faith. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Psalms chapter 33 and verse 6. Psalms 33 and 6. Words are powerful. Yes. They're powerful when they're coming out of the mouth of somebody who believes. God just said, let there be light, and light was. Mm -hmm. It was dark until he said light. And when he said light, light became. Just by the words that he speaks. Well, when we speak his words in faith as believers, then we have the same power. We have the same ability to change things, mm -hmm. amen, and bring to pass whatever God's word says. So by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Verse 9, same chapter. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Praise the Lord. So I think, you know, too often we, we think of God's power, and when we do, we understand it in some limited way. And the, way, the reason for that is because despite of, of what we've read in the Bible, Limited is what we're used to. In the natural world, we're always, there's always limitations. There's always limits. There's always uh, perimeters and parameters that you can't go beyond. Amen? But some people see miracles, and they see them as if uh, they're some kind of implausible suspension of the laws of the physical universe. In other words, some people would tell you a miracle is any time that the laws of the natural laws are stopped. In other words... If I were to fly off this platform, they would say, okay, that's a miracle. And the reason he was able to do it was because somehow either he or something su suspended the natural laws of gravity. And, you know, you understand what I'm saying? 
So that's the way a lot of people look at it. But uh, as signs, though, they, the, the, the truth is they serve just the opposite. The signs of God, the miracles of God as signs, they serve the opposite uh, purpose, praise the Lord. Uh, the d death, decay, destruction, they're all really, they're really the suspensions of God's laws. Praise the Lord. Amen. Miracles are glimpses into the kingdom. Miracles are glimpses into the, 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 uh, the restoration, the new creation. Amen. That's what we see. When we see a miracle, that's what it's supposed to be. We're looking into the way God really sees things rather than us trying to undo what's actually here. We're peeking through that into the reality of God's perfect world. Praise the Lord, the, rest, the restored world. Amen. Jesus' healings are not supernatural miracles in the natural world. They are the only true natural things in a world that is unnatural, demonized, and wounded. Praise the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? That when we see Jesus' word come to pass, when we see the miracles take place, that's what's real. That's what's natural. That's the truth. That's the reality. Everything else is the lie. The sickness, the disease, the, the poverty, the ignorance, all of it. That is a lie of the enemy. That's what the le devil has produced. It's unnatural for supernatural people. Praise God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. I think if we really begin to see things this way, we would have a greater expectation of the miracles, of what we are naturally supposed to be doing and, and experiencing. Amen? For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So Paul says... They themselves show us. So the people that we have witnessed to and pr prayed with and so on and so forth, they show what manner of entering in we had, amen, and how that they turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Praise the Lord. Now, I can promise you this. One of the hardest things in the world is to change everything about yourself, every part of your life, your values, your direction, your outlook, your prejudices, your goals. And that's what Paul's talking about. Amen. And the power of God through the gospel, through grace, has been doing this thing by his spirit. Amen. For thousands of years. People have turned from idols, you know, turned from the world, turned from sin, turned from unbelief. To God. And now we wait. We, we, as these people did 2,000 years or more ago, we're looking for the Son. We're looking for Christ to return. And we're looking for Him in this world through other believers. Praise God. Amen. The power of God influences events. And it does so in order to accomplish whatever God's purpose is, whatever God's objectives are. Amen. And it happens that way every time, no matter what the obstacle is. Praise God. The power of God is trying to influence what we're experiencing here in this world, in this natural world. Amen? Look at, let's look at this in Daniel. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 28. So we know we're weak. How do we exercise strength then? How do we, how do we get the power of God to operate through this weak vessel? By the word of God. Praise the Lord. There is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Now, this is no different than what Mike said earlier, what Tim said, what uh, Roberto said about hearing God, seeing God moving in different ways. Amen. Sometimes it's just a, a still small voice, just something inside of you says, don't go there, go here. You know, the, you hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, you know. And so that's what we're experiencing. That, that's, that's real. That's God. That's God speaking to us. And he can use any number of ways, any, any, any way he wants to. Again, from the voice, internal, 
to circumstances and situations, to a movie. Man, I've, been, I've, 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 I've gotten sermons, complete sermons, out of a movie. Because if you're looking for God, you'll find him. He's there. He's in, he's in everything. He's all around us. He's in us, praise the Lord. So here he, he has a man, Daniel, whom God speaks to and gives him the interpretation of this dream. He get, even gives him the dream and the interpretation of the dream. Now, let me tell you something. Daniel was not born with the ability to interpret dreams. He was a natural man. Praise God. He may have been a very godly man, but he wasn't born with some supernatural ability to just go around interpreting dreams. It wasn't something he did on an everyday basis. Amen. But when the time came and the need arose, the power of God was there. Praise God. The word of God came to him. Amen. The word from God came to him. God showed his power by giving Daniel an ability that wasn't natural to Daniel. Right. It was a God ability. It was only something that God can do. Amen. But he gave him that ability because that was what was needed at the time. Amen. Amen. So he, he has Mike pray in tongues because everything is now with God. Right? To Mike, it was, it was going to be 24 hours later, you know, or 12 hours later or whatever it was going to be. Right? But for God, it was right then. And it was already happening. It was, it was now. Right? right? With Roberto. You know, him and I had a little bit of a conversation. It, it, you know, had you not listened to that voice, there could have been all kinds of extenuating circumstances that would have been uncomfortable for a lot of people, right? God knew that. God saw the end from the beginning. So he gives a word to you. Don't go there. Don't do that. It's not that it's evil. It's not that it's sin. It's just not going to be a good thing for you to do this. It's going to be bad. Amen? Likewise with Tim. Amen? He, he's, he's with you to... Bring about his objective in your life. Praise the Lord. And he'll use any number of ways, hallelujah, to do that. Praise God. Think about it. All the wise men failed. None of them got a word from the Lord. None of them knew what the interpretation was. None of them. Let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. He takes the foolishness of this world to confound the wise. Praise God. It's good to be foolish in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Matthew chapter 14. Verses uh, 28 and 29. Thank the Lord. I love the Lord. I, I love that he, I don't have to understand it all. He just puts you in the right place and, and nudges you this way and gives you the thing to say in this circumstance and that situation. Just, and it seems normal when you do it. You know, most of the time it doesn't seem like an out-of-body experience. Most of the time it doesn't seem like something really strange and, and, you know, what I mean, hyper-spiritual. It seems like just what you ought to be doing at the time, right? It is super-spiritual. It is God. It's God moving the supernatural into this realm, the truth, the reality into this realm. Amen? Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. He walked on the water, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, how did Peter walk on the water with Jesus? It was against every law of nature that, that I know of. Amen? Yep. How did he do it? By the word of God. Come. By one word. Peter believed it and did it. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at this, Mark chapter 13, or excuse me, Mark chapter 3, uh, verses 14 and 15. Mark 3, 14, 15. He ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sickness, sicknesses and to cast out devils. How? By the word of Jesus. They just believed what his word said, what he said. They believed it. They did it. Praise the Lord. All of the apostles were able to do miracles, supernatural events, by the power of God. Why? How? Because of a word. Because of the words of Jesus, they just acted on those words, and it comes to pass. So that's, that's the reason why, before the services, 
at the beginning of the services, we always confess the word. Not because it's some magic gimmicky thing, but to get us used to agreeing with God and saying what God says, because that's what's going to change. Heck, look, if, if I don't have the finances I need, then I'm weak in my finances. Is, is that not true? How do I get strong? Get a second job? Get a something else? There always can be things. I've been down that road before. You get a few extra bucks, the refrigerator quits running. You know? You, you, you get a few dollars, you think you're going to be able to put in the bank, and the car blows up. So it isn't because of, I built and I've had times when I worked two jobs, and Sally was working, and, and, and still we were just really struggling because we were weak in that area. Now, it's not an indictment. I'm just saying that's the reality. But the more we confess that we're not rich by any means, but our needs are met. I mean, God supplies our need because we believe that he will, because we confess, amen, that we are rich because of his poverty. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, only the power of God could raise Lazarus from the dead. Right. What was the power? Jesus simply said, Lazarus, come forth. And that word of the Lord brought him right up out of the grave after being dead for three days. The same thing happens with Jesus uh -huh. in the resurrection. He had a word from the Lord that he would not suffer his, his son to remain in hell. Right. David talk, talks about it in, in the book of Psalms. It's the word of God. Jesus was trusting in that word to do what it said it would do. Yes. Praise God. And it did. Amen. Hallelujah. That same power is going to give us the same life, eternal life, a life of power. It's supernatural only because we're here, yes. only because everything here is judged by the natural. Yes. If we start measuring things from the kingdom perspective, the way it is in heaven, hallelujah, it's not, it's not freaky to us. It's natural to us. Praise God. If God suddenly made us feel strong, just think about this. If all of a sudden we just felt powerful, amen? Or if, if he just removed all of, all of our weaknesses, he altered all of the negative circumstances, would we even recognize his voice as we've already heard here tonight? Would we even know that God was speaking to us? If he removed all of those issues and circumstances and all of that, would, would we sense a continuing need of his presence? Would we sense a need for his power? Are you with me? If all of a sudden we had, I think this happens with, with people, with, with ministries that God has blessed. We see it happen over and over and over. Why? Because all of a sudden they think they've got power. And they're not staying in tune to God. They're not listening to God anymore. They're not looking for God to move in the situation because they think, I got this figured out now. I've got this power. God's given me this power. I can just do it. Praise God. Would we become more or less dependent on God if we were not weak? How long would it be before we'd be like Israel and so many others throughout the Bible that before we'd forget where the power and the strength that we had came from. Exactly. Hallelujah. Human weakness is the perfect opportunity for God to demonstrate his power. To accomplish anything that's in his perfect will. This is his perfect will. Amen. If you know this, you know what the will of God is. If you know what the will of God is, you don't have to put up with something that's not his will. Glory. You can speak to that thing that is unnatural for us. Amen? Amen? Rebuke it. Cast it off. Hallelujah. And speak into that situation, that circumstance, from our position of weakness, the power of God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Let the weak say I'm strong. Hallelujah. Amen? Not because I'm strong, but because God's word makes me strong in whatever that circumstance is that I find myself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. 
for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Now, there's all sorts of you know, metaphors and things going on here. But my grace is sufficient for thee. Jesus Christ is grace. Grace isn't something separate from him. It, he is grace, just like God is love. They're inseparable. It's, it's, it's who he is. It's what he is. Amen. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ. What's the power of Christ? He is the word. The word was made flesh. This is the gospel. Amen. That's the power of Christ. In our weakness, we, we appropriate that power by speaking in faith whatever that word says. Whatever Jesus declared is our reality. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, let's look at this. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. In other words, let him speak what the word says. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If we're going to talk, let's, let's talk in agreement with this. If we're going to speak, anybody, I don't care who they are, if you're going to say anything that's of any value, that's any lasting uh, uh, value, then speak this. And I'm not saying you have to speak it verbatim, but stay within the principles of what the Bible teaches. Stay within what the Bible says. And you'll be all right. Amen. It, it, it will work for you. Praise the Lord. Speak as though you are speaking the oracles of God. Amen. Amen. So what does he mean? When, when Jesus said our flesh is weak, what did he mean? What, what are the implications for us in being weak when God says that? What, let's look at what's the meaning behind Isaiah 31, 1 and 2? Isaiah 31, 1 and 2. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots and because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Amen. Woe to them who are trusting in the strength of this world, in natural power, natural ability. Look at the, just look around. We think, okay, so, so I mentioned having a, a weakness in a financial area. So I, you, you look to uh, millionaires trusting in their wealth. And they're jumping out of windows. They're shooting themselves. They're shooting each other. They're, they're, they're destroying their lives. They're just go through one relationship after another and, and uh, just everything they, they live is about having their money. Everything is about getting a bigger house, a fancier car, uh, different clothes. All, I mean, it's just everything is in that when, in fact, trusting in those areas is an assurance of failure at some point. I promise you, they will come to the end of themselves, maybe not financially, but in some other area. Somehow they'll realize, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. I'm not as, I mean, all you got to do is what, turn on the TV, and you see it every day. Somebody you thought was, you know, really had it together because they had all kinds of money, and they're, 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 you know, their whole life is basically scripted for them, so, you know, they're always looking like they got it all together and everything's perfect until all of a sudden you find out, there's abuse, there's, uh, you know, all this horrendous stuff going on in their life, and you think, man, I'd just soon have what I have and the Lord is to have all of that and the chaos and the, and the craziness that goes on in their lives. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See, it's not that the power of God is complicated or that however we appropriate it is complicated. The problem is we are complicated. We say things we don't really believe. We confess things we don't practice. 
See, our theology, our, our doctrine may be right, but our past experiences can get in the way. How hard is it when you're not feeling well, when you're going through a financial crisis, when you're having a relationship issue, how difficult is it to not say what you're experiencing? Right. Amen? Right. I mean, it's like, I can't say anything. Because if I say anything, I'm going to be confessing something I don't really want. Right. Right? right? Now, it's not denial. It's just that we have a tendency to operate from this world, even though we're born again. I, I mean, everybody, everybody struggles with this. But that's why the, word, the words that come out of our mouth are powerful. Because they declare what we really believe, at, at least for that, at that moment. So it's a, it's, it's a discipline. It's a real renewing of the mind to discipline ourselves not to say what we're experiencing in the natural, but to declare what the Word of God says. How are you feeling? I am healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. We get up in the morning, and the first thing out of your mouth is, oh, my back, or oh, my neck, or oh, my... You know, we're not thinking. It's not that we're trying to be disrespectful to God or that we want the problem. It's just when we don't think, it just comes out. Right. Praise the Lord. It, it, it takes discipline. And when we see another person that's... I mean, think about it. Somebody comes up with a headache. Got a headache. We can pray for that. I mean, we have faith for that. Roll somebody up in a wheelchair. Come on. Now you have to see something. Right? right? right. So it's just, like, it's just like the disciples. They had gone out and cast out demons. The Bible says they had. Jesus had sent them out and gave them power to, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, and we know that they did it. Right. But here they are. And this guy's got a kid who's epileptic or something and has seizures and foams at the mouth and falls in the fire and goes through all this stuff. And for some reason, they saw that. And this was so extreme, it was like what I'm saying. It was like, it wasn't, it was, it was the person in the wheelchair all of a sudden. It wasn't the people with the headache or the person with this problem or that problem. All of a sudden, now it's a big deal. It's something that they look at and they go, we've never seen this before. Or when we have seen it, it always turned out bad. So we're letting experiences and the natural influence who and what we really are and what we say. Come on. It, it's difficult when you have pain in your body, you have symptoms, to not agree with the symptoms. Come on. Now, it's one thing when you're at the doctor and you've got to be honest. You've got to tell them, hey, this is where it hurts and this is happening and that's happening. But I'm talking about in the normal routine of your life, the normal day-to-day -day living We've got to get to the place where we discipline ourselves to not just say what we see, but what the Word says. That's what's going to change things. You can complain forever, but nothing changes. Amen. The only way things change is by using the authority that we have. This weak vessel, this human flesh, it's weak. We know it is. Everybody, if you don't know it yet, you will. Believe me, your day is coming. Hallelujah. So you better learn how to discipline yourself now. And the only way to do that is by the Word of God. God's power always has a holy and perfect purpose. Yes. To deliver, to heal, to set free. Amen. To glorify God. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Amen. God cannot be fooled in the meaningless displays of power. Amen. You can't get God just to show up so you can be impressive. Right. Praise the Lord. You, you can't trick God into, I'm really trying to glorify you when it's about me. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. In short, God will not provide his power to accomplish anything that will not glorify himself, his word. Amen? Amen. Stay in the word. So if he won't display his power apart from his perfect will, we need to know what his good and perfect will is mm -hmm. for everybody, for every situation for every circumstance, and then act in agreement with that. Amen. That's why we need to read the Bible. Yes. Not so that we can memorize it, not so that we have it, you know, on a uh, roller deck in our mind, but so that we know how to deal with situations when they arise. Yes. What does he say about finances? 
Amen. What does he say about our weakness confronting uh, obstacles and situations? He says, let the weak say I'm strong. Yes. Let the poor say I'm rich. Right? Right. What, why? Because that's what he says. Right. There's no poverty in heaven. Mm -hmm. There's no sickness in heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Say what he says. Because we're supposed to be praying that his kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. Now, not, not off in the, you know, never, never land or in, in the sweet by and by, but in the right now, nasty here and there. Amen? Praise the Lord. So let's, let's discipline ourselves. When you're confronted with a situation, whether it's physical or spiritual, financial, whatever it might be, get in here and find out what God said about it. Yep. And then say that. Then declare that. For yourself, for anybody else you're praying. How can you have power? How can you pray for somebody with any sense of, of uh, success or breakthrough if you don't really know if it's the will of God what you're praying? Come on. If you know, on the other hand, that this is God's will for this person that you're praying for, then you can, with all boldness, you can pray it and believe and declare that God will do what God has said. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's not complicated. We're complicated. Amen. We complicate everything. Because we try to sort it and figure it all out. And you don't need to know. You don't need to understand it all. You just need to know what the word says and then say that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we could be weak in every area. And yet the power will rest on us based on what his word says. It will agree with this word. Think about what Jesus did. He went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He just went about saying what God had to say about every situation and circumstance and individual that he was confronted with. That's what he did. It wasn't because he felt really sorry for the, for the leper or that he felt a particular uh, compassion for this sickness or this individual. He felt the compassion of God for everybody. And then he spoke whatever that situation demanded based on what the word of God said, and it came to pass. Amen? Amen. He's told us that those works and greater works than those will we do because he's gone to his Father and sent back the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will quicken this word to you. It doesn't always quicken it, as I said before, verbatim, because you may not know every scripture in here. But he'll give you the principle. In other words, he'll tell you how to respond to a situation. He'll tell you, don't do that. He'll tell you, turn here. He'll tell you, pray. Just pray right now. I don't know what I'm, I'm supposed to be praying for. Don't worry about it. I know what you're supposed to be praying for. Just pray. Yep. Amen. Hallelujah. And then when it comes to pass, you know, do exactly what we're doing here tonight, and that's testify to the power of God. Hallelujah. My weakness, his strength, was made perfect in that situation. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Give him the glory one more time. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. God bless you folks for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. Let's just stay in the word. Stay Amen. focused on it. You cannot fail if you stay in agreement with this word. Amen. Amen. It's the power of God. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a safe rest of the week. God bless you, and we'll see you back here Sunday. Praise the Lord.